This is part two of the chapter five review. Uh, if you haven't watched part one yet, I recommend you tune back into that for part first. Um, this part we're going to pick up on the vocab for chapter five, section four. Uh, the first ver vocab word we had for this was current. It's a large stream of moving water. Uh, basically, it's a very, very big river, but there are no banks of it. So it's more of a uh, flow of water in the ocean without any kind of definite walls around it. We did some stuff with labs on uh, two, Monday and Tuesday looking at these different types of currents. Um, taking a look at the next section, or the next thing on there is what's called the Coriolis effect. This is the curving of wind and currents due to Earth's rotation. Uh, if you take a globe and you try to put your finger on there, and you compare how far your finger travels from the top, or from uh, as you go away from the equator, you can actually see that your finger will travel across more area as you spin the globe in one position than in the other. And the water and the winds actually feel that same effect, and it causes this swirling motion. It goes in one direction in the northern hemisphere and the opposite direction in the southern hemisphere. It's a very important effect, though, as it helps it to drive several different things. It's kind of a myth, though, that a lot of people think of it as involving the... Uh, swirling of water in let's say a, a drain in your or your bathtub draining that's not actually driven by that so much um, but you can kind of think of it kind of similar to that style but it's not driven by the Coriolis effect climate is referring to the pattern of temperatures and precipitation for an area so if we take a look at the climate here in Fort Wayne we have a a cold climate uh, typically during the winter and we're a little bit warmer during the summer all this is controlled by how the winds and even the oceans affect um, what's going on around us. And one of the ways it affects us is what's called the El Nino. Of course, there should be a little N or a little uh, tilde above the N because it is an N Y in that case. I just couldn't find it in the PowerPoint. But it's referring to warm water, which causes warmer climate conditions in North America. It's kind of like when you take a hot shower, it makes the bathroom get warmer. It's the same kind of concept there. If you have warmer water off the coast, it's going to cause it to be warmer on the land. Usually we see some unusual conditions that come along with this. Um, we'll talk about some, what some of those unusual conditions are in a little bit. Basically, a La Nina is the exact opposite of a El Nino. It's a cooler water. Um, it causes colder climates um, and a little bit cooler conditions in North America. Um, again, we have some unusual conditions, but not quite as extreme of conditions as you see with El Nino. Now, the next part we're going to talk about are some of the concepts. Um, this is the next part on your study guide. Um, and this is the first one is the relative amount of fresh water on Earth. Now, the easiest way to always think about this is there's not a whole lot of it on Earth. In uh, all reality, about 3% of water is considered fresh water. Now, fresh water is referring to water that does not have salt in it. Um, the other 97% is considered salt water. The even uh, more amazing part about that 3% is that 3% is mostly found in the form of ice caps. So it's actually a very, very small amount. Uh, an actual way to think about it is if you take half of a two, or if you take a two liter pop bottle and you were to take out about two or three drops of water from that, or two or three drops of soda, that'd be about the equivalent, if we'd say the two liter pop bottle was all the water on Earth, those two or three little drops would actually be the equivalent of how much water is actually drinkable to us humans on Earth. Now, when we take a look at the water cycle, I found this really very, very simple drawing, and I'm sure you've seen this several times before. I know you saw it in sixth grade, and probably saw it in third grade and fourth grade as well, of what's called the hydrologic cycle. And it's just the movement of water from all the different phases. Um, and we can see it goes into precipitation, and then it falls down, as, or it goes into clouds, falls down the form of precipitation, runs off, goes into groundwater, accumulates in like oceans and streams evaporates, goes back up into the clouds, condenses, and the whole process starts over again. does this over and over and over again, making it so that we can actually be drinking the same thing as was on the earth during the dinosaurs even. Um, the next thing we're talking about is how watersheds work, and I'm actually going to hold off on that and put that as part of the third podcast, so make sure you tune in.